every time Putin speaks or acts on a world stage, I see my freedoms rise. And I want to go into this today. It's the Saturday, the 10th of February, 24. It's about 11 a.m. Um, we've got no clock on it in here at the moment. And I want to go into why this phenomenon actually happens. Um, I've got to take it back really to during 2020 through to 2022. I think it was February the 24th, 2022, is when Putin invaded Ukraine. Now, take us back to February the 23rd, the day before, less than 24 hours before that. And our, here in the UK, I'm not going to mention any political names, you know where they were, were speaking of us being in like a like an eternal sort of lockdown stage, um, like, like it was just going to flow, this is going to be like, the, as, as they put it, the new normal. Um, and and this this is our future now. Um, we we are stuck in this, and for the foreseeable future, we won't get out of it. I remember this is just before spring. Um, it's played very well that sort of language because it's just not long before the sun comes out. You know, March here in the UK, any time from sort of middle of March, it becomes hot enough to walk around in a t-shirt like I am today, actually. Um, but but it becomes sunny enough to to sunbathe too in some parts of the country. So, you know, it was very strategically played. And it was basically reminding people that don't go thinking you're free. Don't go thinking the flu season's over. You can't do this, right? So within less... So on the 23rd, that was announced across mainstream media. On the 24th of February... Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine and like a switch it was like boom all news outlets all across the world all these 24 hour news channels or any type of mainstream media that's all they could talk about from that point on and it was just like and I kid you not for any of you watching this video in the distant future as a bit of a historical sort of thing I kid you not it was like a switch had been flipped and Covid did not exist it just didn't exist after that point and all I could think to myself was and remember it's a very dark time for everybody but that was a good thing and I'll get onto that too um and all I could think at the time was so when I really look at if I really want to look at the, the truth aspect of this having an opposing power which you obviously was obviously evident at that point um, make a move on the world stage, um, one that that the people who were locking us down feared tremendously as as an option that they haven't allowed for or are not under control of. Suddenly, they become very very paranoid um, of what that could do, and all the narratives, every news broadcast, and it was just like it didn't exist. And then that very, I think it might have been the twenty fourth, or maybe it was the twenty fifth. Our um, prime minister at the time turned around and said, look, um, we need to move on with our lives. <laughs> and uh, we need to we need to get on with our lives and, um, you know, make the most of this. We can't go into this perpetual sort of lockdown. So they were within, like, as, as usual, as you always get with governments, they sort of go by what's going on around the world. And if things flip or anything, then they, they, they can just switch like that. It's like they switch consciousness, like, oh, no, we're doing this now. All the time toying with people's finances and stability and food sources and everything. But, um, yeah, so it got me to thinking. Now, I'm sat here now on the 10th of February, as I said. Just a few days after the um, the Tuck Carlson um, and Vladimir Putin in interview dropped. And I noticed, I wanted to, because I knew what happened in 20, on, you know, around the 24th, of February 2022 I wanted to observe what was going on what the common sort of 
knowledge was or the, the what what the moves were that were being made and you could see this see this extreme once they found out that Tucker Carlson had landed in Russia and that he was going to the Kremlin to interview Putin you seen this sudden panic it was like um like everybody come out suddenly you know Tucker Carlson was the most evil person on the planet the the EU wanted to put sanctions on him um some members of I think it was Congress in the US didn't want him coming back into the country at all um, until he'd been um, whatever had happened to him, you know, chuck him in the gulag, whatever. Um, and you could see all this behavior, this psychotic behavior, you know, Hillary Clinton come out and did an interview for one of the alphabet soup news agencies cnbc no it wasn't cnn it was C cbs or i don't know one of them um just saying all about this situation and how you know tucker carlson basically what the, the general theme of it all was that tucker carlson was enabling putin the the warmonger it couldn't be nothing further from the truth actually um to to do this sort of stuff and you know to have a, a voice on the world stage Whereas I always grew up with, I can remember seeing it, everybody being interviewed, every world leader, no matter what they thought, no matter what they did, um, you know, they would just get interviewed because at the end of the day, you need, to, if dialogue stops and you stop the ability to be able to voice your opinion or chat about it or come to some sort of compromise or really go in deep talking about what, how do we get over this, then the next thing is kinetic war. And of course, what you realise is that the trouble is, is that they don't want dialogue because they don't, there's the reason why the media outlets and all the world leaders, including the EU, had a total meltdown at the prospect of this interview, which I think was a really good thing, by the way, um, is because they knew that their narrative um, could be or will be completely shattered by anything that, that was said. And what you witnessed was there was a rollback of things that were draconian, like totalitarian. And I started seeing things in the news and on being shared on the social media, like people in, in the real news outlets, like people who just speak on camera on certain subjects who are so obsessed on it on YouTube that, uh, that they get all the newest papers that come out and all the newest proposals and stuff like that. So you've got these suddenly like the ULES scheme is under question and, and the legality of it and there's people who are actually standing up against it in, in positions of power and there, there was um oh, what else was it the um anyway basically there I, if I think of it during the video I'll tell you all the things that, that sort of I, I could witness changing around me like it was like we we're being sweetened up like oh don't worry like we're not that bad you know Putin's a bad one really um we're not that bad we're gonna we're going to let you be able to drive your car more than 15 minutes from your home where we're not going to charge you so much. Um, you started seeing information coming out and moves being made and proposals being put forward in this country and parliament and things like that for talks on um, the legality of the draconian totalitarian measures that have actually been done. So it's like giving people hope. But at the same time, and this is really sort of critical that like this is really the the main one of this event this interview which is an event in history um is that they suddenly decided that despite knowing that uh our uh, not our that despite knowing their king charles um had cancer they decided to drop that knowledge at the same time as this interview was coming up and all you've seen, so suddenly you don't see anything about this interview coming up because you don't want anybody knowing about it. The only place you could really find anybody talking about it was on YouTube here, X and uh, Rumble, places like that. And then, and then you will find out that this interview's coming up. If you were in that bubble of watching mainstream media, you would never know. Um, and if you didn't read any papers, you know, as in, I'm talking about political papers or anything. You would never really know it was coming up. So, um, yeah, again, you know, the, the what do we call us? I saw 
we we are the media now. We 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 won that years ago. That's why, hence, we call it the legacy media, referring to the mainstream media. They even call themselves it now. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we found out that this interview was going on, but you wouldn't you wouldn't have known it was like it was like listening to crickets like around when when it was all mentioned. But suddenly in the UK, the way they cover it, as they always do, is suddenly you know the king has cancer and. It give the it give them a uh, it give mainstream media and all the newspapers and everything else something to talk about and everybody else and I couldn't get away from it. I'm I don't even have a I don't even watch anything to do with TV. Um, I, I I would only watch YouTube on on a TV say um, occasionally or anything like that. But um, but yeah, so so it was nowhere. Um, it was just all about Charles and how, how was, and so I thought, oh, this is how they're playing it. They're going to chuck you back into the royal family again and. Uh, you know, we all have to feel sorry for one, one privileged tosser who, who who's got cancer, um, above and beyond all of our family members who have died of it and rotted of it, despite because of lack of treatments that are out there, and even though us as a working class have funded everything that that's gone into the research, including charities and 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 everything else. Anyway, um, so. You, you get to this position where you start you start looking at how are they going to react, what are they going to try and use to bury this information, and it starts making you think about you know a lot of people. We do obviously because we're, we're in the alternative community, and we look for things all the time with an open mind, um, but not many people know that you know during nine eleven when it actually happened, it was announced. Well, I think the Pentagon, but it may not have been. It may have been another source that um, that six trillion dollars had gone missing, just gone, vaporized, and nobody has ever been. To my knowledge, it never made it mainstream because the news of the day was nine eleven, and it makes you see more that this had to happen really. Or be waited for, you know, like what was the saying Ian Crane used to say, uh, today's a good day to bury bad news. So they'd wait for an event and then they would, uh, you know, a big event and, and they could bury the bad news underneath it. And it reminded me of that in a way, because people that still don't know to this day, no one really sort of should have been up in arms, Americans. I mean, that was a lot of money back then. At this moment in time, like America is 34 trillion in debt. Um, but back then that was you know, six trillion was a lot of money because obviously the dot debt has been risen so much over these last few years. Obviously purposeful again. And this gets me on to the next point. The frustrating thing about being in the alternative community and seeing so many things going on is when people get don't understand that their country has been sold out. Their country has been sold out basically to um, foreign um, interests. And when they look at these things and they say to themselves, right, OK, so I've got um, this situation going on where um, sorry, I think a landowner's come down. I hope he's not going to question me being parked outside of his gate. I'm not on the gate. Um, so, yeah, so when they um, so, so what happens is basically people are talking about this situation where um, they can't understand why the the leaders of their country, like say in this country in England, why uh, Richie Sunak would want um, people to be, you know, to, to support this woke ideology and destroy everybody's consciousness. And they speak about so when they speak about war, like you know, there's this great sort of push towards what could be like war now. Um, when they speak about this war, what they what they're actually um doing now is is trying to recruit british citizens in order to go fight in these wars that are potentially coming up you know to start training people how to fight and of course the the alternative some of the alternative community members are on there saying oh we've got them now they're not going to get anybody to to um so, uh, to subscribe to the army because people are, you know, or if they do, it's going to be no fighting people, so they're not going to win. And uh, you know, we're going to we're going to be in the situation now where they're going to have to destroy the the wokeness and and drop that agenda 
of of wokeness and and uh, you know gender neutral and all the other stuff that's quite it doesn't feed itself into being a masculine army person who's going to be able to win a war, right? And they talk about it as if like th th that they want to do that. Politicians don't want us as a UK to win a war. They just want to sacrifice you. That's all it is. And they actually don't want you to win at all because what you've got to remember is, despite the fact that they they want you to do this um, and they want you to fight in these wars, um, they that was never their intention for the UK or the US to win any war. If anything, right from the beginning, when George W. Bush Sr. invaded Iraq in 1992, um, what he was actually doing there and what was actually going on between him and others, and then the second invasion of Iraq, which is obviously the biggie after 9-11, um, between Bush Sr. and Tony Blair, for instance, um, what you what you're actually seeing there throughout this is the fact that what they were trying to do was get the whole of the world to hate Western civilization, and that's still the quest today. It hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. There's still this quest to get people to to get the rest of the world to be the enemies of the Western civilization. Because what you got to remember is, as part of Western civilization and its ideology is capitalism. I mean, I'm all for free market, traditional capitalism, not the corporatism that we have now. It's a different thing. And people often get that. They say, look at the world now. And I'm like, no, look at the world when, when your your grandparents were buying stuff and, uh, you know, and, and making a place in the world with the prices of the houses and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, what you've got to remember is, is that from those wars and beyond which never made sense, especially the 9-11 stuff and all that. It was just an agenda to use the Western Western civilization and the fighting fit men who supported that patriotically to go and sacrifice them as cannon fodder um, to create hatred, kill many innocent women and children around the world and to create a hatred that we see today towards the Western nations. And it was all part of the same destruction. So it frustrates me when I see people in in who are apparently like, you know, quite aware, suddenly turn around and go in, oh, what are they gonna do now? You know, as if they as if they never planned for the fact that there's some uh guy who's now a girl who's joined the army and dyed his hair purple and wears a dress and a got a machine gun as if they didn't plan that to go out to war and lose, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a way of empowering. See, part of the destruction of that Western ideology, which doesn't support them because they want a, a full control. I remember that the Western civilization was all about, uh, basically based on the American dream of owning your own house and your own bit of land and being able to do what the fuck you want in your life. Um, and, in, in terms of, you know, not causing anybody else harm or loss, but just just being able to buy your plot of land and uh, and, and do what you want and uh, travel where you want in your whatever vehicle that was the most economic for you or the most, you know, enjoy enjoyable. So, you know, the fact that we've been set up for so many years and all these wars have happened, I could see that many years ago and uh, I got into many arguments with people who were full on for Tony Blair and stuff, you know, um, but I could see that that was part of the destruction that was needed in order for um, the world to become enveloped underneath this globalistic sort of unelected world government. Um, and, and, and what they do basically, they, they, they've, they have no geographical, what you've got to remember is, is that, people are either sold out because there's knowledge on them that this is world leaders this is there's knowledge on them that can take them down in an instant um and destroy them or they're under threat of their life or they're comfortable with the millions that they have through their acting careers or for their political gains after leaving office or whatever it is so nobody ever speaks out in in these circles they and they they have no geographical um allegiance they you know these these people who who run our country here like richie sunak and in america you know joe biden he doesn't really he doesn't love americans and richie sunak, sunak don't love british as in 
I'm talking about the traditional like idea of our land and our history and where where we come from where we're going and what what's happened and uh, the support of the 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 cultural sort of formation of freedom and what that looks like in terms of owning your own stuff and being able to go where you want to go do you see what i mean so these people and then their their mind was never based here then but their mind is in like richie sunak his mind will be in davos along with most other pol politicians and joe biden's mind would be in china um and 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 davos to, to as, as a secondary thing as well so they never really ever were fighting for you so they they use double speak in order to make it out like they're fighting for you um but they but what they're actually meaning by the way that they speak and the actual words they use is is something completely different than you will ever you will ever understand and that's how they manage to communicate to each other but that's a different video that one this is really good that one but um you know going back to the the putin interview this week and what i got from it was that you know he's basically he's a guy who just he just loves his country on a deeper sense that uh, he knows his history i mean anybody who watched it you know it may be a bit sort of boring to most people because we're not russians but that's the point um, he goes through his entire history of, of the country in the first 30 minutes. And, and it's, you know, Tucker Carlson himself said that, you know, he felt like he was being filibustered and that it was all it's going to be. And he kept interrupting him and Putin did get annoyed at times. You could see it. And it's because he had a heart for his nation. Do you see what I mean? And this is what these people haven't got. And this is what you've got to understand is that these these people who are in power their 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 heart is not with you it's with the position that they can get and the power they can be given in davos or in china or anywhere else that uh, that might be up and coming that's promised them you know wealth and security and, and jobs and stuff like that and their family safety so when you say when you turn around and say oh what they're going to do now because you know, they don't have a fighting army as such, not like it used to be. When that's great. That's what they want. That's exactly what they want. And they want to set that country on that country. Remember, they're thinking, well, we're thinking locally, as in, you know, when I say local, I mean, like, say, I'm, I'm living here in England. So I think about England or the UK in general. And I sort of think, oh, this is bad what I'm seeing here. And I want to protect my country. They're not thinking like that. All they're thinking is where, who's going to promise me a uh, sanctuary? when what i'm creating here goes down and it's going to be that person and once i'm in i'm in because i can't opt out of it because of my family and my legacy and my safety and everything else and my financial stability so that's, that's what you're seeing you're seeing people being owned do you see what i mean you see people being owned by this um by the devotion that they've given to other lands far away and that's why you've always got to focus on different, you know, we, we haven't got to focus on different. I mean, that's why they want you to always focus on places which were, which are foreign lands because they're trying to give you a global mindset. We need to spend all of our money and see our kids starving and hungry and in rags again and home, homeless rise because we need to go and feed. Uh, we need to go and feed that war um, with cash down the road there. Because that is part, we're, we're using those people and our people as weapons to be able to destroy what's left of Western civilization. And it is destroyed, but never fear. It, the Western civilization take two is going to be far better without these people in it. And, uh, you know, they will, there, there will be so much trauma caused by them that they will pay the price. And this is why you see armies, um, the, 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 so I'll go into it briefly, okay? The, the, the European army is basically a way of saying, of giving people um, guns and being able to put them on a landmass that they're not connected to in order for them to be able to mass slaughter or do exactly as instructed by the, their EU masters. So if they say go on this land and go through and pillage and shoot everything, they will just do it. Because if they land on a different land mass, they're just they're just going to do it. There's no there's, they don't have no connection to it. It's not like they're shooting their people, 
Whereas when you get a local army, even though they are detached by nature, by the system, when you get a local army, um, they'll look at you as a British citizen and they'll say, I can't kill this man. He's got a family here. Like he, he's, I, I feel a connection with him. He's, he, he's trying to own his own house and just drive his car. I can't shoot him down. But you go and get someone from the Middle East and, and uh, you know, and, and give them a, a uniform and send them through here as an EU army, then, uh, of course, they're just going to go, Brrr, you know, that's it. It doesn't matter to them. It means nothing. And that's the trouble, see, is that that's what you don't realise, is that all these countries that are all fighting with each other, both sides are supported by the same people. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Um, and, the, and fed by the same corporations albeit under different names it's the same money source it's the same everything and the reason why putin's interview would be so disruptive to that is because he's not on board he is fond of his country russia and all the history that sits there and he is fond of what he's what he's done and what he's achieved and he's trying to use a and he's very clever. I mean, obviously, he's not a nice man. He wouldn't be in the position he's in if he was nice. Um, but he's been very clever and diplomatic. I, I expected a lot more bombshells. And I think people who were going against him and the media outlets and the people who control the media outlets were expecting a lot more exposure than they got. And I think he played a very, very clever game there because he went into not just the history of his country, but he went into the fact that... Um, you know that the, these people I'm, I'm trying to talk but the peace agreements keep getting ripped up i'm trying to talk but the peace agreements were chucked in the bin and they were told by other people so he's so what what he's saying is is that he's going for peace and he's trying to get peace and he won't be part of that system which they want him in so therefore he's an enemy but they won't they won't let him do it there's people higher up who won't won't let that happen they ha russia has to be an enemy in order to move forward with a european army and a european union itself in a in a globalistic type thing so this is why russia keeps setting us free you see what i mean it's all coming together now and and this is why you you can't look at your people who are in charge of this country or you voted for as being any type of savior in any way whatsoever because their mind is not for you it's not with you they are they are already bought and paid for and uh they would happily send you off to fight in a foreign war in the same way as they you know well go, going back to the the unattached armies and stuff like that when i drive here from um from here in the somerset levels if i was heading into bristol on the a38 not once on those bus stops outside of um the holiday inn which is by bristol airport where they house immigrants not once have i seen one woman or child anywhere and every single male is between 18 and 35 years old. Now, it makes you wonder, doesn't it, right? So, obviously, we know, we know in the alternative, most of us know in the alternative community, what's actually happening here is that they're bringing in um, what essentially they can control and use and manipulate in order to aim against Western civilization, basically. And they've created that enemy by fighting all the wars in the Middle East. Do you see what I mean? Um, so all the children and women that they've killed, all the all the economies that they've up, upturned, and cities that they've destroyed, we now have their children here in this country, unvetted, ready to be deployed, or just act out of pure uh, malice to run a mock of our cities and our institutions and stuff so yeah you you do see this sort of pattern coming up um and there isn't much you can do about it in sense of your own life so you've got to try not to let it wind you up too much but you do need to know exactly what's going on um because then you stop seeing these people around around you as being any heroes or anything like that and you start to see what they're actually doing so when they want to send your child out to war you just make sure they don't go Keep your uh, keep your women and children very safe and secure. Don't let them join the armed forces because you know they're going off to be sacrificed 
for a rich politician's war that actually you don't want you to win or, or the other side to win. He just wants you to, to all maim each other in order to create the chaos to, to have something born out of it. So there you go. Speak to you soon.